Hello, this is Gabriel Mong, and today we are going to talk about unwrapping. And I'm going to try a little experiment here as well because I want to bake my normal maps onto from my high poly version of this bracer, uh, which I'll show you right now, onto my low poly version of my bracer. So here's, let's get rid of the wireframe. Here's my high poly bracer and I have it flat uh, for now so that I can get a good bake and I'll show you right now it's got a turbo smooth on it just to get some of the clean edges going. And I have two iterations on it and then underneath it just hide this real quick. I have my low poly version. I've got a bunch of modifiers on here to bend it around the arm and hopefully I can get it to work great later. But before that I need to unwrap it. So I am going to go down to the editable poly part of my stack, add a U unwrap UVW on top of that. And let's turn our edges back on with F4 and go to edge selection. And I want to split this in half because I want to be, I want a clean top and a clean bottom. Basically just two flat surfaces and we're going to pick this seam here and I can try and loop this but I tried this before and it didn't go all the way around so I'm just going to manually select a couple of these it should go all the way around but for some reason it doesn't like me today I think it's just these corners it doesn't like And now I'm going to click on this button up here in the top right corner to convert edge selection to seams. So now that's going to turn blue for me. You can kind of see it right there. <clears throat> and so that will be a seam in my normal map, or in my unwrap, excuse me. And I'm actually going to leave those but these holes are going to be a problem so I want to make a seam here as well and cut these out so and again convert edge to seams We'll do that for all of them. There's a couple of different ways we could do this. I found I find that this method will work better for this particular model. I'll show you another method real quick on these other holes. And I'm hitting uh, Z to, what's it called? It's uh, a zoom extend selected. And that's just a shortcut key for that little button down there. So another way we could do it, instead of selecting the edges, I could hit uh, point to point seams. And basically I can start on a corner and just go around. Um, from vertex to vertex and that will cr create my seams as well. You have this little elastic band showing you 
where it's going. And close it off and right click to stop point to point. And we've got one more to go. And I can right click again to get rid of it because I want to zoom in on this guy. Another way is just to do edit seams and you can just click on the edge you want to make a seam. So a couple different ways. Some work better than others depending on the model and the situation. And you'll see why I'm making these weird little cuts in a second. So turn that guy off, and I think we're done for now. We got our seams done, and now we can go into the UV editor. Give it a second while it pops up. Zoom out a little here. sky over. Normally I have this on two monitors so I can be watching my my uh, perspective view and unwrapping at the same time. So I actually before I continue I'm gonna throw on a quick material here with a checker pattern. Diffuse, add a bitmap, and I have a couple grids that I like that I found on the internet that just help me see if things are reversed or if, the, if there's any stretching that's going to occur. So here's a good one. just apply that to my object, make sure it shows in the viewport, and we'll give it a little bit of extra tiling so we can see what's going on. And you can see right now there's all kinds of stretching. It's, the bottom doesn't even have any space at all, so I'm going to select a polygon, and over here we've got expand face selection to seam. So what that will do is select all of the polygons within that shell that I made, where because I, I cut it out from the bottom, and it's selected in here, and. What I want to do is a quick planar map first. Let's try that. That should, we've got to turn it off. And now we can move this guy around. And I'll do the same thing to the bottom half. Do span faces and a quick planar again. Turn it off. Now we got our two UV islands, but they need to be relaxed. So relax by face angles. 100 and 0.1 is pretty good. I do. You can either say start relax or apply and see what happens. Basically it's going to eliminate any stretching for you. Relax all the seams. 
smooth everything out. Let's put this guy over here so you can see over here. Our little checker pattern is pretty even. This guy is rotated, so we want to fix that. That's better. And there's actually a cool little feature they added to Max 2012. I've changed over to Edge Selection, and I can select this edge and loop it and align to edge and I'll straighten all my UVs out there. We'll do the same thing here, loop it, align to edge, beautiful. So now these guys are straight up and down but we need to fit them inside this black box. That is where our texture will live for this bracer. Back to Polygon and I'm going to select by element so I can grab both of these guys and rescale them so they are exactly the same size as each other and we can shrink these guys down. And I'm actually going to make them a lot smaller than this box because I'm going to have other pieces that are going to be part of my texture. Normally, you'd pro if, you, if this was the only item that you were going to texture, you try to fill this box up as big as you can. The more space you give these, the more detailed your texture will be. But for now, we're just going to make these guys about that big. I have a kilt, maybe the weapon, I, his weapon I can put in here, maybe his boots, so I need to make, leave some room for the other things, other items that I will be unwrapping later. So that's, that's done. We do a check real quick, make sure there's no overlapping faces, and it looks like we've got a couple, so let's let's see what we've got here. It's those holes that we got, so I'm just going to manually move these guys around, I think.
and I'm back. I had to fix a couple of things. Um, I don't know why it was messing up on me, but I think I've got it sorted now. And in the process, I am going to actually stitch these two pieces together on this bottom edge. So, stitch to target source. Nope. See, I don't like those buttons. I have my shortcut key. And basically it does stitch selected and it brings up this little window and I just have it set to control shift S and it does it automatically for me. So anyway, those two pieces are now one big piece and I'm going to flip them around and give them another quick relax. Just in case. And those little flaps should be fine now. We'll go back in and adjust these guys so that they are not overlapping. How is that? That should be better. Basically, uh, so you don't think I uh, cheated or anything, I went back in and cleared away the unwrap that I had done previously. Um, I don't think it liked it when I edited, when I merged those vertices together. Uh, I, I did it the wrong way, and so it was uh, complaining. And I will show you the correct way to do it because I can't just add back the unwrap. Max will will hate you. All right, so we fix those, and let's go back to Polygon and select overlap faces. And it looks like we've got a couple down here. So let's adjust these. Nothing's ever automatic. You have to manually tweak some things in the unwrapping process. And I think that's why people don't like unwrapping because it requires some work and it can be tedious at times. I look at it like a, a big jigsaw puzzle um, and I have to solve where all the little pieces go. Alright, so let's check there's some inverted faces and any more overlapped faces. Nothing there, nothing there. Beautiful. And let's just make that fit this section here. Give it a little bit of room on the edges. We could go right to the edge, but I find that you want to give it a little bit of padding for your light maps, for your normal maps. Just you, you want to be able to paint past the edge. So now we can close this 
And before we bake that on, there's a couple of verts that are just floating. So in order to fix that the right way, we edit, add an edit poly on top of the unwrap. And now we can go into vertex select mode. And let's find these guys here. And I can select those two. And control backspace, remove them. And hopefully those were the only two. Oh, no, I see one more here. And that should do it. Maybe on the top. Nope, we're good. So now I can collapse my UVs down to this editable poly. And they will bake on perfectly. And just to prove that they're there, We'll add another unwrap, open the editor, and as you can see, they are there, and our floating verts are gone. A little trick I learned a while ago that putting the edit poly on top of our unwrap we're able to go back in and edit some of our topology oh, so if you wanted to shift some of these lines around say I wanted to raise this up a little make it more indented do make these holes bigger whatever you add an edit poly on top of your unwrap and it won't it won't screw it up too badly the only thing you have to be aware of is adding any kind of polygons that's that will will screw it up but you could add you you could add in an extra edge loop if you needed but any kind of variations you might need to unwrap it a, a second time so let's remove that again and now we are going to bake our normal map in the next video.